What's going on boys? No guides here. Welcome back to another video. And today video, I'm going to show you what stats to actually look out for if you want to play a fullback in centre back. Now this is very, very important. Um, I'm someone who's been using fullbacks for about 10 years and there's a lot of stats that people are not taking into account when choosing a fullback. It's not just as simple as saying get the best pace and get the base def best defending. There's certain things like work rates. There's certain things like, you know, the dribbling, a jail team balance, the, f the pace of the jockey, etc. Et and I'll also explain to you why fullbacks are better now. First of all, fullbacks have always been better than centre backs. I've been raving on about this for like multiple years now. Um, 19, I've played it a bit. Now, in 19, the only reason why fullbacks weren't as prominent as they were, um, well, compared to this year, is because of the height. We all know beach ball 19, crossing was the most important thing. You might have seen on the pro scene, people like people like the pro players who use Sergio Ramos and play him as a right back or a right centre back, but that is about it. In FIFA 20, I just use fullbacks. No matter what, if you watch any of my gameplay from FIFA 20, I just use fullbacks. Now, in terms of fullbacks itself, the most important thing you should ideally be looking at is pace. Now, why are you saying pace is not important? People are saying, well, why do I have to use pace? This is the thing. If you're a top tier player, let's say you're a gold one to an elite player, right? I would consider that a, a top player in my opinion, compared to the average realm of players, okay? You're going to be struggling with a low, with like something like 85 pace unless you're on the point. Even if you're like elite three level, unless you're a consistent elite three player, if someone has a three ball in behind, you need to be able to react. A lot of people can't react in time to that three ball. So the benefit is if you're someone like me who hasn't got the best reactions, the faster the player that you have, the better you can recover. Also, it goes hand in hand with pressing. So of course, the faster a player is, the faster you can press your opponent, the faster you, rec you can recover and all of that nature. In my opinion, I would prioritize sprint speed over acceleration. Acceleration is not that important because after about two seconds, three seconds in game, you normally reach top speed. So I'd rather have 99 sprint speed than acceleration. Try to go with the base stats of high. Um, that's what I would say, high base stats. Then it comes actually to the shooting. Now shooting is irrelevant. A lot of people say you need 92 positioning or whatever you don't. It's irrelevant. Um, for attacking players, um, you can argue positioning is somewhat important. But whether a defender has 99 positioning or 30 positioning, this is mainly in regards to attack positioning. And from what I've tested so far, it has no influence on the player at all. Then we move over to passing. Passing is not the end of the world. If you can get a four-star weak foot player, um, that way it's easier for you to distribute the ball, especially if you're getting team pressed or you're under constant pressure. The better short passing you have along with the weak foot, so if you've got a four-star or five-star weak foot, it's easier for you to pass the ball out the back. But again, most players, they're maybe like a first-time pass or a very risky pass. That's why passes normally go astray. If you're playing a 3-5-2, generally speaking, a 3-5-2 system, you might see a left centre back or a right centre back position. Then you ideally want to look for at least curve and long pass in case you do the driven three balls down a wing. But it's not the end of the world. Then it comes to physicality. The biggest myth is, is that you need physicality in FIFA. Now, a lot of people don't realise this, but when they see me play, they understand what I'm talking about. If you're faster than your opponent, you don't need strength. Now you're gonna be like, well, hang on, what do you mean? Why do you need why do you need to have pace? Why do you need strength to body someone? Yes, it's true to body someone, but most of the time when you're defending, you're gonna be moving. The better sprint speed you have, the quicker you can catch up to your opponent or the quicker you can run in front of them. If, for example, two players are running towards the ball, if you have faster sprint speed most of the time, you're gonna to run to the ball before your opponent and therefore you don't have to body him. I'm not saying go get zero strength, of course not. I'm saying if you get it around 70s or 80s, it's completely fine. You don't need 99 strength. Strength is more important for slower players because if you have a slower player, you need to body someone. I'll be honest, most of the time, strength screws you. I mean, you know, for example, how many times you lose the ball from behind you. Or let's say, for example, if your opponent is running alongside and somehow he catches up to you. If you know that's going to happen, just stick with sprint speed. You can never do, be disappointed. I, I never, ever, ever get beaten from a through ball in behind unless I made a mistake. So strength never lets me down. Even if you're parking a bus, strength is not... The only time strength might be useful is if, for example, someone's running alongside you and sometimes you can borrow them. But then I found that normally with the higher tier players are using running jockey anyway. So strength is almost irrelevant in that instance. Stamina is the exact same thing. Um, for centre backs, they don't really run around too much. So you don't need to really concentrate on stamina too much. Um, and likewise with jumping, um, no one really crosses the ball. Maybe like, you know, in like division five and below people cross the ball. Um, you'll see most crosses being driven crosses along the ground or knee height or torso, lower torso, chest height. 
most of the time their um, sprint speed is the most important as opposed to jumping because they normally just volley the ball away. So that's kind of what's the most important thing. Um, but the FIFA 19 jumping was poor. People are going to be like, all about corners? Most people, if you watch my videos, you will know to bring the goalkeeper out to the six yard line and therefore you can, you know, defend the corner. So even even though I've got players in my midfield like Kante as well as on a near post, I still move my goalkeeper. I very rarely concede corners, maybe one in 10, 15 corners at max, sometimes very, very fluky opportunity. So jumping, it's not that important. Then it comes to um, the aggression. Aggression is a bit more important than you think. It's not the do or end, or it's not the kind of the first line of stats that I go to, but it is something to bear in mind. You can argue that the more aggression a player has, the more chance you have of giving away a penalty. Yes, but generally speaking, the better aggression you have, um, there's a higher chance for you when you're fighting for the ball. In fact, I'll put aggression over strength in some situations. Um, but aggression is a really important stat, and you'll find that sometimes off the ball, players with better aggression kind of feel a bit better, especially when you're kind of near them and you switch them there in a better position anyway. Defending, interception is obviously the most important thing, um, but again, you have to, it's not that important. It's, if you can get 90s, it's fine. Most defenders have got 85 anyway, so it's completely fine. Heading accuracy, again, not that important. Um, defensive awareness, um, it's a bit of a tricky one. Now, I would say for players below Elite 2, um, this is very important for you. Um, anyone above Elite 2, I don't think is that important because most of the time you're manly defending. I manly defend most of my time. I run out like a maniac sometimes with my centre backs. Um, but because of my skill level, I know how to recover with my defenders and I position them correctly myself. If you're someone that relies on AI, use your CDM most of the time, and then you want to switch to your AI defenders using the L1 or the LB button or the right stick switch, then defense awareness is a bit more important. I would say try to go with like. 85 plus most of the time you're putting an anchor or a shadow on your center back so it should be fine anyway um, stand tackling of course is probably one of the most important things another misconception is though um, the difference between 99 and 80 will you notice a difference probably not that much um, i find that if i'm if i have the ball with my striker and i press the tackle button i mean i'll give you an example right um, i'll have for example like Cristiano ronaldo he's my striker um, if you time your tackles correctly even your strike, even though he's got 30 stand tackling, will still make the pass. I mean, still make a tackle, sorry, and still pass the ball away if he does kind of, you press the X button as tackle. Um, so don't worry too much about stand tackling. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's more of a stat, I would say, if you're, you know, the better stand tackling you have, you can argue the better success rate, or let's say, for example, the better reach. It's very situational, um, but most defenders are going to have around 80 anyway, so it's, again, not that important. Uh, when you're going towards slide tackling, again, unless you slide tackle, it's irrelevant. Um, if you can prioritize two things, I would say defensive awareness, stand tackling is what I would say number one, and interception is number two. If you can prioritize all three of these, but most of the time, most center backs have around 80, at this age of game, 80, 82, 83 anyway, with the anchor that goes up to like 85 to 90s, so it's not that bad. Um, then it comes to the most important, most, most important, agility and balance. My people that neglect this is unbelievable. You know, when I said focus on agility and balance, I really meant it. I didn't just say it just for no reason. Um, please understand that the better agility and balance you have, the faster you're able to run in jockey. Um, even if you don't think of it laterally, um, but if you see a player moving like Neymar, if you're swaying left and right, and I know most of you guys that watch this video, you want to get better at the game. I know you're panicking when you're defending. If you have better agility and balance, your players will move quicker. They will feel better, more responsive. They can dribble out of situations when you're getting pressed. They can dribble better. They can turn quicker. They can do everything better with better agility and balance. For every single player, agility and balance is the most important stat this year, without a doubt. If you haven't got balance in this game, it's done for you. I'm telling you, it's done. Agility balance is so important. Can you get away with it? Yes, I have Ronaldo and striker, but I definitely know Ronaldo on a ball um, when he's got, you know, even though I put an engine on him, he's not the best because he's quite clunky, even though he's 81, you know, he's six foot two. So agility balance, what you should be prioritizing on in a defender. I look at sprint speed, agility balance, and stand tackling is the main things I go for. Everything else after is nice to have. Um, reactions, I don't think is that important, to be honest. I don't really notice that much between 99 and 80. Again, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, ball control, dribbling, and composure. Again, you can argue the composure affects, for example, when they get how they get the ball, how they receive it, the pressure, the chance of everything else failing. You can argue that with reactions together. Um, but I'll be honest, I've been using Samedo and Wan-Bissaka since the game came out. 
And honestly, they're that good. I haven't even been able to replace them. Um, um, you guys think I'm joking. I still use Semedo and center back. I said in FIFA 19, Semedo is one of the best center backs in the game. He still is. And it's a joke because once people start using him, they start laughing, thinking, okay, now I understand. You know, it's a combination between his aggression, his stand tackling, his, of course, top tier jail team balance, and his sprint speed, which make him impeccable to use. The same thing with Rambasaka. Rambasaka is a bit more on the physical side, so most of you guys will like him instead. Um, but Rambasaka, the exact same thing. Hasn't got the best of balance, but because he's got the agility, it does make up for it. Bit more clunkier, um, but when you put like an anchor on him, it becomes a top, top tier card. Um, but the reason why these two cards are more important than everything else is work rates. Now, work rates, I would say most of the time have no influence. Unless a player is on balanced instructions, work rates don't have that much of an influence. If a player is on stay forward, he's always going to stay forward. Maybe like within that vicinity, or let's say there's like a box of where he stays forward. Maybe someone's high lows over here and someone's low highs over there. But if a player is on bad, if a player is on comeback in the fence, whether they have high low or low high, they're still going to come back. Yes, they might not make as much of an effort, but they still come back regardless. This year, I think it's a bit more important. I think with it, with they kind of buffed AI positioning, they haven't told us, but they've kind of altered work rates how they work. I would say defensive work rates, medium high is probably the best to go. That is why Wan Bissaka and Semedo are so good because with a high work rate, defensive work rates, they're always positioned correctly. Now, can I play with someone who's got low work rates? Yes. But I'm telling you, it's much easier to play with someone that's high. I would not go towards low. I would say medium, medium low, uh, medium defensive work rates or high is completely fine. Try to get high. Um, but if you see two players, one where one guy is like 99 rated, for example, and one's like, I don't know, 86 rated, one's medium, one's high. Of course, go for the 99 rated who's medium. Um, but if you can go for high, um, the attack work rate doesn't mean anything. Um, I'll be honest, it doesn't. Um, a lot of people keep getting confused. Like, when I have the ball when I'm attacking, my defender's on a halfway line. Well, that's how they're meant to be. Don't forget, depth does not influence when you have the ball when you're going forward. When you're going forward, your full backs and your back, center back, wherever you want to play, your back line four are always going to be on the halfway line. Remember that when you're attacking. Whether you have high attacking work rates, does it influence it? Does it influence it a little bit? Yes, I agree. I'm not saying it has no influence. But most of the time, the defensive work rate when you lose the ball is the most important thing. Because attacking-wise, when you have the ball, they just sit there anyway. And I don't see them being any more aggressive. If you're using seven depth, for example, when your opponent gets the ball, they'll try to play the offside trap maybe a bit more. Or try to keep the line high as possible. Some people refer to auto offside trap, but it's not really. But the defensive work rate is the most important. Just trust me um, on that one. Um, Height is also important. I find that personally speaking, six foot. I mean, a lot of a lot of you're gonna see a lot of um if you scroll down below, you're gonna see a lot of like gold three, gold two players all saying that I'm wrong. Let them say what they want, but I'm telling you right now, you only need anyone above a uh, six foot. You can argue that the taller the player, the better presence they have. Now, a lot of lower tier players they think that this is important. Now, it is important. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disregard and say it's not important. Try to get the tallest player you can. But also remember, the tallest player you get, the GLT balance has to be higher as well. I would say 5'11 to 6 foot is fine for most fullbacks because um, most people don't cross the ball. Most crosses are driven crosses around chest height or ground height or like, you know, so ground height, I mean like torso, lower torso level or, you know, around the ankles. Most of the time you don't need the height. In other FIFAs, you watch the FIFA 22, maybe crossing is the meta at that point then maybe you'll have to prioritize on the height. But for this year, you do not need height. I play with five foot nines. Now, am I saying you should go towards five foot nine? No, I would say if you can get a four back, that's, I would say lowest, in my opinion, five foot 10. Anything above that is fine, but I'll go low as five foot 10, unless you know how to defend, because you can argue the stature, you know, the, be the better stature you have, you can argue in theory, the longer reach you have in your tackle, insignificantly maybe you can argue no actual scientific theory behind that um, but you can argue the longer stance you have the, the wider the tackle you have the wider stance you have blocking the angle towards goal the more physical presence you have you can argue even more important than strength because your body is going to be naturally bigger and therefore you're better like someone who's you know five foot seven with 99 strength is not going to hold off someone as good as for example who's six foot three with 80 strength for example um, but i would say 510 is okay. A lot of people are saying it's not okay. It's okay. Trust me. I use it. It's fine. Um, and don't forget, most people are watching this video. You're not pro players. You're not trying to get 30 and 0. Now, when before when I made this video, everyone was crying to me, oh, the pros don't use fullbacks instead of back. Well, 
Now the pros are using fullback centre back. The argument's gone out the window. But there might be one argument they might say is, um, oh, you know, you can't do that because someone is so short. Well, I'll tell you something. Unless you're going 30 and 0, where you need to win every single game against most players that you'll face, height won't be the biggest issue. The biggest issue with height on the pro scene is the stature. And let's say, for example, if someone has R9 in behind you, they do a ball roll or scoop down at the perfect time. Maybe you can argue strength and height is a bit more important for the reach or for the run and jockey coverance. Maybe at that point. But even for myself, I don't even need to use it. And if I don't need to use it, I'm pretty sure most of you guys don't need to use it. And don't forget, I defend aggressively. And one final thing is, um, someone said to me, I shouldn't play fullbacks. Apparently, I've committed a crime. Um, apparently, I've broken the game, I've heard. Um, of course, that is absolute nonsense. Um, go tell Jamie Carragher he can't play in centre-back because he was a striker in the academy. You know, you got Gareth Bell example, for example. He started off as a left-back. He's a, he's like a, well, like whatever he is now, and he became a left-wing, right-wing, then he kind of free him at Tottenham, whatever. Go send a message to Tottenham and go send a message to Gareth Bell on a post and tell him he should be playing in left-back and then then come back to me before you say that. Apparently, I'm doing something illegal. Um, but that's just to answer those people who said that. And then they enjoy the game. Um, fullback and centre-back are fun to use. You can press faster with them. Um, but those are the stats. Traits are not that important. Don't worry about it. Um, as I said, most important thing is, in my opinion, high defensive work rates, agility and balance, sprint speed, stand tackling interceptions, and I would say aggression. Everything else comes second. Stuff like short passing is nice to have. Um, and defense runner, sorry. Um, slide attack and heading accuracy is nice to have. Um, jumping, most people are for what it's going to be around 70 anyway and above. But it, but and composure reactions are nice to have, yes. But realistically, not every single person can afford Trent. You want the best center back deal on the 10k? Buy these two. I'm telling you, use these two in center back. I promise you, use them after a month, you'll notice no difference. No difference, you'll notice. And then you'll thank me after using them. And everyone else has used them in the chat. Uh, maybe comment down below why you think Wan-Bissaka, Semedo are so good. Maybe you can help influence some people just so they understand how good they really are. Um, but that is kind of my um, opinion on the fullbacks and centre-back. Um, what sets you should look out for. Thanks for watching, boys. Take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.